So this was a pop quiz which was related to organic chemistry. First, we'll discuss uh, this pop quiz. In the first question, uh, this pop quiz is having multiple choice questions only. So in the first question, what is the name of series such of uh, such as the one shown? So basically what we have to do, we have to identify the <coughs> series which is representing that they have the same functional group. You can see all of them have OH and all of them have a carbon-carbon double bond. So when we have OH and a carbon-carbon double bond, like we have the same functional groups and uh, we have a certain general formula is there for that series. What we call that series, we call that as a homologous series. Because the characteristic of a homologous series that compounds, like alkane is one homologous series, alkene in another, alcohol is another, alkene, uh, uh, carboxylic acid. So these all are homologous series. What are the characteristic of a homologous series? They have a general formula is there. And they have a similar chemical properties. They have the same method of preparation. And they have the same functional group. So these are the general characteristics of the homologous series. So as you can see here, all of them, you will find that they all have the same functional groups. Like there is a carbon-carbon double bond and there is also an OH. So this give an indication that this is a homologous series. In question two, prop e, prop two e in one all is flammable, toxic, and environmental hazard. Which hazard symbol should be shown on its container? So you can see like four options are there. We have to select it's flammable, means it can catch fire. It is toxic, and it is it has an environmental hazard. So when we check the options, look, as you can see here, what is the difference between the sim B, C, uh, like you can see A and D have the same symbol for the fire as well as B and C. But B and C, it's it's like O. So it means this, this substance is ox highly oxid, like it can easily be oxidized. It is flammable, but it can be easily oxidized as well. They did not mention about anything about oxidation, so that's why we have to select it's flammable. So A or D can be an answer because A and D both are showing flammable. Then what is the symbol for toxic? The symbol for toxic is the same. Then which one is showing that it has an environmental hazard? Like it is dangerous to the environment. This is showing the environmental hazard. This is showing that it is harmful or carcinogenic. Like it can cause a cancer or uh, dangerous to a person rather than environment. So that's why this symbol is not correct. So option A is the right answer. So if it was same question was there and say uh, that substance is highly oxidizing. So if it is oxidizing, then what is a symbol for oxidizing? So that is like O is there and then the fire which shows that is highly oxidizing. In question three, this one is related. This one is related to the substitution reaction, the free radical substitution reaction in alkanes, which is not a step in the reaction of chlorine with propane in UV light. If I write the reaction mechanism for this reaction, how it will happen or occur. First, we have initiation. What happened in initiation? That uh, the first, the chlorine molecule will break down into chlorine radical. That is the initiation. 
Then if it is real, then we have a propagation. What happened in propagation? If we have propy, propane, C3, H8, reacted with the chlorine radical, as a result, because what will happen? Hydrogen will form a bond. It will become C3, H7, radical plus HCl. And this C3, H7 radical reacted with a chlorine molecule, another chlorine molecule, and one of the chlorine atom will form a bond with a radical, so it will form C3, H7Cl plus a chlorine radical. This is a propagation step. And what about the termination, how the reaction stop? If the chlorine radical combined with another chlorine radical, it will form chlorine. If a propyl radical, C3H7, reacted with a chlorine radical, it will form C3H7Cl. Or if a propyl radical reacted with another propyl radical, as a result, it will form C6 and H14, which is, that means it will form in hexane. So we have to identify like which of the steps will not have, like which is not a step of the reaction in the reaction of a chlorine with propane in the UV light. So C3H7 radical plus chlorine radical. So you can see it is there. So this is there, C3H7 plus C3H7 gives C6H14, that's also present. C3H7 radical reacted with a chlorine molecule, form C3H7Cl plus chlorine radical, that's also there. So it means D is not there, so D is a right option. So what, how to know, identify, you just write a reaction mechanism. And after writing the reaction mechanism, you can identify which of the stage is not involved in this reaction mechanism. In question six, which is skeletal, which is the skeletal structure of 3,4-dichloro, 2,2-dimethyl pentane? So we'll name each of them and uh, identify which one is the right answer. So when we check for option A, First thing, how to name, first we select the longest chain of the carbon. In a, like in a skeletal formula, these lines, like each end is representing carbon. So one carbon here, two, three, four, five, six, and seven carbon atoms are there. So first what we do, we select the longest chain of a carbon. So if I select one, two, three, four, five, or I select, one, two, like if I start from here, one, two, three, four, five. So both ways, any way if I try to select, I will get five carbon atoms in the structure. So we'll get five carbon atoms. So that is our, so the first thing is whenever you're naming a hydrocarbon or, or you're naming an organic compound, what is the first step? Select the longest carbon chain. That is the first step. Then the numbering should start from the nearest branch or a functional group. So after selecting the longest carbon chain, we'll number these carbon atoms. So when we number these carbon atoms, if I number from here, like from left, so this will be one, two, three, four, five. Here, second position, I have chlorine. Third position, I have uh, chlorine. And these two are also branches. Like if I circle them, this is also a carbon branch. This is also a carbon branch. This is a chlorine. So here, second position, we have chlorine. But when we number from the right-hand side, if we number this, if these are the branches, like this is one, two, three, four. So if we number from the right-hand side, this will be one, two, three, four, five. 
as you can see here here in this case also there are there there like there are branches at 2 but why we prefer to number in this way because as you can see when i number from the right hand side there are two branches when i number from the left hand side there was one branch at 2 like the second position when i was numbering from the left hand side at the second position i was having only chlorine but when i number from the right hand side at the second position i have ch3 groups two ch3 groups so with numbering, I will follow. I will follow a numbering. With side, I will have the maximum number of the branches. So we'll number from the right-hand side. So when we number from the right-hand side, first we name the chlorines. So third and fourth position, we have chlorine. So we say three, four. And there are two chlorines. So we say use the term di. Di means two. And chlorine is there. So we use the term chloro. Then we have second position. Two branches are there. So... 2 comma 2, like the two branches are there. Each branch is at position 2. That's why we write 2 comma 2. And the two branches are what? So it will be di. Because two branches are there, di. And each branch contains one carbon. Because this is CH3, this also CH3. So it is di, CH3 or one carbon means meth. And because it's a branch, so it will be vial. So it is dimethyl. And for 5 carbon, what we say? We say it is pent because of 5 carbon and N because of single bond. So this is 3, 4, dichloro, 2, 2, dimethyl, pentane. What about the others? Like if you name the other one by using the same idea, first we select the longest carbon chain. So this is one carbon, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven. So when we select the longest chain of the carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So maximum we'll have in this. So what is the name of this compound? If we number, we can number from right, we can number from left, but we'll number from right because we have the two branches attached with the second position. If we number from the left, there will be one branch attached with the second position. So what is the name of this compound? Second position. And fourth position, we have chlorine. So we'll say 2, 4, dichloro. So 2 and 4, we have chlorine. So 2, 4, dichloro. And which position we have carbon chains, like one in the second and third position. So it will be 2, 3, dimethyl. And five carbon atoms are there. So it will be pent. And the single bond, it will be. N. So this will become 2,4-dichloro, 2,3-dimethyl pentane. Same way we'll number the same idea, same concept is used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So again we select the longest carbon chain and other than the chain we consider them as a branch. So we have second position, we have chlorine and uh, methyl and Third position, we have chlorine and fourth position, we have methyl. So what will be the name of this compound? So we have uh, second position and third position, chlorine are there. So 2,3-dichloro. And uh, third po second position and fourth position, we have methyl group. So 2,4-dimethyl. Why we are using a di? Because two, of, two branches are there. Each contain one carbon, so that's why dimethyl. And because of 5, it will be pent and a single bond N. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when we select the longest Chain of a carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So same way. So here, these are the branches. Here we have 1, 1, 1, because both carbon, uh, sorry, 2, 2. Because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have uh, second position, 2, 2. Dichloro. Like second position, we have 2 chlorine. And then we have third and fourth position, methyl group, so dimethyl. And because of five carbon, it will be pent and a single bond, it will be N. So 
Option A was the right answer as we discussed, but that's how we name these structures. Then why does a free radical substitution reaction has a limited use in the industrial chemistry? So in industrial chemistry, free radical substitution reaction is a limited use. Like we don't specifically use that. So what, what might be a reason for that? The free, the reactions only occur at the upper atmosphere. But this is about the, this is right. Like free radical can easily happen at the upper atmosphere. But the thing is we can also perform. So in industrial chemistry, why it is having, this is a right statement, but it, but it's not like only it should, it mostly, it should be mostly occur at the upper atmosphere because uh, as you, you can see the atmosphere, the earth atmosphere is blocking the UV light. So it, how it blocked it is by free radical reactions are there. The initiation required an ultraviolet radiation. That's also true. The statement is correct, but not the have a limited use. The further substitution products are formed. Look, look what actually happened. It's like, for example, if I want to produce a methyl chloride, say we are reacting methane with chlorine, so it will form a methyl chloride plus HCl. But the problem is that it will undergo a multiple substitution like C3, CH3Cl, Reacted with another chlorine molecule, it will form CH2Cl2 plus HCl. So multiple substitution will happen. That's why we never get a 100% yield or amount of a, pro like what we desire, we don't get it every time. The yield will be much more uh, smaller, like amount of the product, the desired product will have a very small percentage as it undergo a multiple substitution. And the termination reaction produce an unwanted product no, the termination reaction as it produce alkanes, alkanes are more useful. So this is a statement. So statement is not correct. So further substitution products are formed. That's why we don't prefer to produce uh, halogen alkanes by this method as like it will not stop at one point. It will continue to happen or occur. Like multiple for methane, uh, like a methane turn into chloromethane, chloromethane turn into a dichloromethane, dichloromethane turn into trichloromethane and multiple substitution until all of the hydrogens are replaced by chlorine. Which molecule can exist as E and Z isomer? So for this, you have to draw the structure and to be an E and Z isomer, the, the groups which are attached to a carbon-carbon double bond should be different. Like C double bonded with C. To, the best way to draw opti the geometrical isomer, first draw this basic unit and then complete. So hex 3 in, like, or if I want to draw a simple structure, I have hex 3 in, hex means six carbon I have to draw. And third position, like third carbon is having a double bond. And I have two chloro, like second position, I have chlorine attached. And fourth position, I have ethyl attached. Like this is ethyl group is attached. Then this will have three hydrogen because like hex means six carbon atoms are there. Second position, I have chlorine attached. And that's two chloro. And fourth position, I have ethyl attached. So this is the fourth position. One, if I, because it's the same thing, one, two, three, or one, two, three. So this is the fourth carbon. So uh, ethyl is attached. Sorry, I wrote methyl, but it should be ethyl. So I should make C2H5. So this is CH3, this will be CH, this will be CH, this will be like CH2 and this will be CH3. So if I draw this like C double bonded with C, this will have one side hydrogen attached and another side it has CH. 
like the CH, then CH, uh, the CL is there and CH3. But for this one, when you check, one side is CH2, CH3. This is ethyl. Another side is also CH2, CH3. So, like, because this is ethyl and this is also ethyl. So, both gr identical groups are attached to a carbon which are having a double bond. So, it does not exhibit a geometrical isomer. So, this is not correct. When we check B, so we have hex means six carbon atoms are there. Between the carbon atoms, the second position, there's a double bond. Third position, we have chlorine. And second position, we have methyl. So this is also methyl. So as you can see, the carbon, which is having a double bond, identical group is attached. So I don't have to check anything else. If identical groups are attached to the carbon, which are having a double bond, so it does not exhibit geometrical isomer because we cannot compare which group is heavy and which group is lighter. Then if we check this, this one, hex 2 in. So between the carbon atoms, there's a double bond. Second and uh, second position, we have a methyl group. So again, it won't have because Second position and third position, we have a methyl group. So as you can see, this will have three hydrogens. So the carbon, which is having a double bond, identical groups are attached to that carbon. So it cannot exhibit a geometrical isomer. So we are left with the last one. So which is hex three in, like when we draw the carbon, six carbon atoms are there. There's a double bond uh, with a third. Second position, we have a chlorine. And fifth position, we have a chlorine. And the remaining will be hydrogen. So this will have uh, three hydrogen. This will have one hydrogen. This will have one hydrogen. This will have one hydrogen. This will have uh, one hydrogen. This will have three hydrogen. So you can see like carbon, which is having a double bond. Like we talk about this carbon. This carbon, which is having a double bond, one side is hydrogen and another side is this whole group. Same thing, this carbon is having hydrogen and another side, this whole group. So this can exhibit a geometrical isomer as two different group types of groups are attached. So the CH, CL and CH3 is there and this will be H. So we can compare which one is heavy and which one is lighter. So here, like this is a heavy group and this is also like compared to hydrogen, this is heavy. Heavy groups are on the same side. So this will be cis or Z. And uh, if they're on the opposite side, we draw them on the other side. Like if you draw CH here, CL and then CH3 and H is here, this part. So then it will become trans. So D can exhibit a geometrical isomer. So to be to have a geometrical isomer, the carbon-carbon, you always check the carbon-carbon double bond and the group which is attached to a carbon-carbon double bond should be different so that we can identify which is in and which one is out. And we, you have to check for both carbon. If one side, one side it's different group attached and another side identical groups are attached. So again, it cannot exhibit geometrical isomer. Is it uh, clear? Anyone having a doubt or want me to repeat any question? So this was a pop quiz of organic chemistry, pop quiz 15.